All right, we're headed to we're headed to uh, Fort Marshall next, everybody. So let's bring that up. All righty. So uh, when it comes to Fort Marshall, um, Fort Marshall is uh, only two thousand influence. It takes eight people, I think, to move in, um, but it is so worth it. It's the first eight person base that we've had um, that is only two thousand influence, and I love the fact that uh, I love the fact that we were able to play around with. The costs and the locations and exactly what it's all about it's it's got a great defensive layout uh and i will uh we'll talk about that more once we get there but for now if let's we get there you will get there uh one way or another we'll get there hell or high water all right so uh we'll put this up and then i will come back and focus on the game uh, not that i can do much other than pray that brant doesn't kill us okay <laughs> all right lucy if you want to talk a little bit more about Fort oh yeah about uh, so in terms of our overall goals for the map, we, you know, we, we, we plan to have a starter base. We plan to have a couple of, of big end goal bases and then a couple of middle ones. Uh, Pterodactyl Park is one of our middle ones. Uh, the Red Talon base is technically counted as one of our middle ones for the, for players who, uh, plan to grow their community with more than five or six people. And Marshall, uh, Fort Marshall is definitely one of your end game ones. Uh, that you can try, especially if you're saving your martial content to the last minute because of how compressed everything is and how scary the, the plague wall zone is. Uh, the um, the story of the, the martial base was also, it has a very you know unique location, uh, convenient to the rest of, of things that are going on down there. You're right next door to Tressy, uh, and you have, um, but we, we needed to kind of fit with the theme that the military was there, and then they had to have good reason to leave. Like they didn't just leave because they got tired and needed a vacation. They they were completely wiped uh, or pushed out of the map by force. So the facility designs needed to reflect that. Uh, we wanted to make sure that you know that it was clear they had come here with a plan. So we have things like uh, a built-in kitchen and I. Uh, you have something extra in your slots on these pictures. <laughs> um, do, do I? I think so. Oh, um, anyways. Let me, see. let me see. What's in there? Are you oh, supposed I've, to show that? I have no okay. idea. I don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't... Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm, pay, I, I, I think no, I'm imagining things. Pay no attention to the thing behind the curtain. Uh, anyways, so in terms of endgame bases, uh, another... Uh, Endgame base that worked really well for us in previous maps was the firehouse because of uh, players uh, really responded well to having a bunch of built-in facilities just ready for them when they moved in. Uh, so we did pretty much a, a very similar thing with this one where there's a lot of pre-built facilities. There's barracks. There's uh, you know the, ki the kitchen I mentioned. There's a latrine. There's a medical facility, and uh, I think a shooting range. And I. Uh, the only thing the player needs to do is repair them because they were completely wrecked as the zombie hordes came in and came and went and as the military was pulling out. So the you know, in terms of facilities, this place is well stocked, and then you also have additional slots to do things with. Uh, so if if you are still hoping to, to build your leader facilities there, you can. Uh, I'm also it's not a facility technically, but I'm I'm also just a big fan of the defensive towers this base has. Uh, you can just look around and see so much, and of course shoot a lot of things. And you're not even on them right now, Joe. What are you doing? I'm I'm getting rid of the things that I could see from those wonderful towers that are built here. But but you didn't shoot from the towers? No, not yet. Here I've got. Uh, there's it's lethal. There are plenty of zombies. Okay, fair enough. So go up to these. Here's here's the here's one tower that overlooks the parking lot. Oops, if I could shoot straight. All right, so that yeah, guy's gonna come the in the thing door. That's, the thing that's different about these towers is unlike our other bases where we had one tower, this one has three. Um, the Red Talon also has, uh, when you fix up that facility, it also has three spots that are um, covering three of the walls. So this was a bit of a departure from from uh, how we'd mechanically set up the towers before as well. Um, but uh, yeah, like Lucy was saying, this is all part of the, the narrative that the military came back and um, reestablished itself, cleaned up a little bit, um, but then also ultimately failed um, once again. 
But uh, this was a much stronger strong point than say like the checkpoint. This is what they call a forward operating base. And uh, it's where a, a good number of people would have would have been stationed to uh, to do operations within the Marshall area. All right. So uh, to go back to the point of what Lucy was talking about, once you set, once you have uh, repaired the the guard towers here, uh, your sentry that's that's on this one will keep this street almost all the way over to Blaine's grocery. We'll keep it just completely safe. Um, and then this one, as I already pointed out over here, this one will pretty much watch your parking lot as you're coming and going. Uh, and this one, this one watches if you're coming in the back, to, if you're coming in the back way. Uh, also, there tends to be like a, a horde that kind of comes in this general direction from somewhere over there. Uh, and this person is pretty much uh, in charge of taking care of that. So this is, it's a very defensible base. One of the other things that I really like is there's door number one. There's door number two. And there's door number three, right? And so, like, if you're when you're under siege, you can just pop out. You're right at door number three. You pop out. You're at door number two. And well, actually, from here, you can just do door, door number two and door number one. And so you just kind of go back and forth. It takes a little bit of, of getting used to, you know, kind of like the rat maze that you 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 had you may you may have had to go through if you ever lived in dorms or barracks or anything like that. Um, but once it's done, it's 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 probably one of the it's one of the better bases um in the game but it's still only third best on this map according to my math come over here joe i'll show you my favorite part about the space okay oh the yeah. memorial so this eric wasn't... tan and doghouse actual which eric tan was the was the soldier who died at the end of uh, one at the end of one uh, and, and doghouse then, actual was from lifeline and doghouse actual was voiced by none other than some uh, guy some a guy really was. bad a really terrible vo choice but you know <laughs> we had a budget so we did but this was this was also uh important to me to to um just to show uh that you know i support veterans and and appreciate the sacrifices they've made because that's that's how they um, celebrate the life of, of their friends who they've lost. So well, and um, if you don't mind me saying, Brent, when we went to uh, when we went to Pax uh, Pax Prime just recently, uh, one of the first places we stopped was StackUp.org. Yeah. Um, so you know, if you've got extra money and you like helping out veterans, you could do a lot worse than that. Um, but uh, then, then to give them some help, they do great things. Um, oh, hey, look, it's a feral. And look, there's a uh, there's a horde coming from right where you said it would come from. <laughs> yep. Nice. Sorry, sorry. I had to show <laughs> off just a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> 